Uh, thank you, Anne, uh, very much for inviting me to host this panel uh, this morning. Very excited to be here. And uh, I was kind of actually going to make a little joke uh, about that. And because Anne had mentioned something about Oprah, and I said, actually, I do, I feel like Oprah, but at the cottage, you know? <laughs> so, very comfortable chair. Uh, these beautiful Adirondack chairs from Francois Bruno, and I actually own two of them, and uh, they are fantastic. So thank you very much, Francois. Um, so good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. So this is about making the right moves, which is always a challenge as a business owner. Uh, whether finding just that right location or figuring out those strategic moves uh, to expand a business, each entrepreneur is certainly unique in the way that they make their key decisions and set their course. Uh, so we've got three very successful entrepreneurs here this morning uh, who've agreed to share some of their challenges and successes in making the right moves. Um, so we've got a series of questions that we'll, we'll ask our panelists this morning and try to keep it fairly short uh, with each question so we can try to get through as much as we can and, uh, and then hopefully have some time at the end, as Anne said, for some questions. Uh, so I thought we'd start with uh, Francois Gay this morning. Francois, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your business, uh, where you're located, and what product, service, or experience uh, that you provide? Absolutely. Uh, Prismium Group is the largest cable and fiber optics manufacturer in the world uh, from a design and manufacturing perspective. Um, we're located in Canada. Our plant is in Johnstown, just outside of Prescott. Um, we've grown there from 40 people about four years ago to 200. Um, our company is about 22,000 people, a uh, $12 billion company based out of Milan, Italy. It used to be Pirelli, and now is the Prismium Group. Uh, we manufacture everything from transmission products that go into the ground for um, uh, solar power. Um, for, we do it for, we put cable into Airbus planes, we put cable into uh, transport system, metro systems in Toronto right now and, and BC. Uh, submarine cabling underseas, um, it's every type of cable you can think of, fire retardant cable that goes into mines, uh, cable that goes into um, oil wells, um, et cetera. So it's a wide diversity of products. Um, in Johnstown, we manufacture transmission products. We have both a low voltage, medium voltage, and a high voltage line um, there. Excellent. How many employees do you have in Prescott? Uh, we have over 200. 200, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Excellent. And next we have Dave Curry from Thousand Islands Helicopter Tours. Dave, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Yes, good morning. Um, good morning. We are a helicopter operator uh, located in the uh, Thousand Islands, just right off the 401, exit 645. Um, we specialize in tours of the Thousand Islands, the Bolt Castle in the U.S. Um, we are custom charters, uh, aerial photography, video, and um, this year we are doing um, helicopter ice fishing excursions. Excellent. And we are a uh, year-round business in the Thousand Islands. It's a great way to expand your, your products and services, is, right, going yeah. into the winter business. I, I think Forbes Simon is here. I think Forbes would be happy to hear that. Oh, there he is, yes. <coughs> he, he loves ice fishing. That's great. Thank you very much. And Francois Bruneau from uh, DFC Woodworks. Francois, can you tell us a little bit about your business? Yes, uh, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, uh, our business is, uh, well, as you can see here, <laughs> Adirondack chairs. Um, we moved here uh, to Kempville uh, two years ago, and we've had uh, uh, very strong uh, growth, and we've um, we now expanded our markets to not only everywhere in North America, uh, every state in the uh, U.S. and Canada, and uh, now we have... Uh, a dealer network in Europe uh, with uh, uh, two new dealers this year alone, uh, one in Netherlands and one in uh, Norway. Excellent. And uh, we now ship our chairs uh, all over the world. It's amazing. Uh, and how many employees do you have locally here in Kempville? Uh, right now we have 10, and we're actually planning an expansion uh, to uh, have up to uh, 15 within the next, uh, 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 by next year. Excellent. So a local manufacturing company creating jobs, which is, of course, our, our dream in all of our municipalities. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question for your panelists is, uh, what have been some of the critical moves that you've made in your business? And what we could mean by that is maybe a physical move or even those strategic moves that you've been making that have been critical for you in your business growth. And uh, Dave, we thought we might start with you on that question. One of our uh, critical moves was moving from our, our previous location in Kingston uh, to be closer to the Thousand Islands to make it more uh, uh, economical for uh, price-wise, we reduced our prices. We're closer to the uh, 
the Thousand Islands uh, and make it affordable for everyone to uh, enjoy a helicopter. Right, yes, right. I understand. Like, so your location is right near the 401. Location and right. uh, leasing versus buying. I mean, I had a lot of input from Niagara Helicopters, which were a huge help. Um, they convinced me to uh, buy rather than lease because, you know, again, I own the 42 acres right on the 401. And uh, then when you're leasing, you know, you can your lease can be up at any time and and you're gone right i understand too you've got like a welcome center there like a visitor center and yeah new welcome center 2100 mm -hmm. square foot uh hangar facilities uh it's in the works uh to expand our business to include a a, a flight center uh trade uh, flight uh, operations and uh um uh, maintenance organization for eastern ontario right Excellent. And Francois, we would, uh, Francois Gay, uh, we would ask two Francois, Francois A, Francois B. Uh, Francois G and Francois B, that's right. Um, same question, Francois, just in regards to the critical moves that you've been making for your business. I think three years ago when I, it was almost two, three, two and a half years ago, uh, first came in, uh, the population at our workforce uh, was about 60% temporary. Um, and uh, we made the decision strategically to make everybody permanent. Um, and um, that was a significant move because when you're looking at investing in training and making sure that people have a home long term, uh, it's critical. Um, we were about 40, so over three years we've gone to 200. Um, and when you make commitments to people to go permanent and you invest in their training, they're going to work a lot harder for you and uh, their wages are going to increase more significantly. Um, over time. So for us, investing in the workforce and making sure that they were actually uh, going to be a part of our um, group long term was really critical. Um, our attrition initially when I first started was astronomical because of the temporary side. It was probably close to about 60%. And you're talking about good jobs, but there was a lack of cohesion, lack of training, lots, lots of things that were missing. And our attrition now is it's probably below 2%, so it's probably 1%. Uh, so significantly, people are staying. Uh, they see the organization is committed to them, investing in them through wellness programs and different things, and uh, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not losing people anymore. Excellent. And it certainly puts you in the position of being very competitive in regards to that market, right? Absolutely. Over, over and above your competitors. Excellent. And Francois, we would ask you the same question about the critical moves uh, that you've made in your business, maybe your relocation or other kind of strategic moves that you've made in regards mm -hmm. to your business growth. Uh, so uh, our, uh, our first big move uh, two years ago, uh, moving to Kempville, was uh, an important move for us, uh, being close to our uh, U.S. market, uh, close to 416. Uh, actually lowered our uh, our shipping cost right. um, and uh, we've been uh, introducing uh, lean manufacturing techniques to uh, increase uh, increase uh, productivity and um, and uh, right now we're uh, growing in an uh, exponential growth uh, growth pattern so uh, we're uh, managing that right now and it's always the challenge, isn't it, of managing that growth. It's great Absolutely. to have growth, but managing it is always the challenge. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, the next question would be, do, have you experienced any challenges with some of those moves? And we've, we're, we're talking about that. Um, and if so, how have you overcome them? And maybe by um, challenges, you know, could be things like, was there resistance maybe in the market or, or other areas? Uh, maybe there were financial, uh, you know, uh, implications or, or the local economy may have affected some of your decisions in your, in your business growth. And uh, we could start with uh, uh, Francois again on that question. I, I think when you go to management and you say you want to make your population 100% uh, versus going perm, there's a challenge because there's a cost issue and they're worried about cost escalation and everything else. But if you looked at our business and you started looking at our sales and you started looking at all of you know, the background, you would see that it's a fairly stable industry. Sure, copper and, and aluminum prices go up and down and that affects our business. Uh, but the reality is if you don't make the commitment, you don't take risks, you don't get the rewards. And, and uh, we've been very happy with the decision, but it, it took some convincing uh, because you know, we're not just dealing with Canada, we're dealing with Lexington, South Carolina, where North American operations are, and then we're also dealing with Milan, Italy, which is extremely cost conscious. Most European companies are. Um, so that was, uh, that took some time to convince them, but uh, it, it, it made sense. It's a whole new way of thinking about your business model, really, isn't uh, absolutely. it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And Dave, um, just in regards to kind of any challenges that you've experienced through your moves? 
Um, challenges, uh, the, the town, the township, the community has been, you know, 120% behind us and the support has been uh, overwhelming. The challenges that in the aviation is the financing with the banks. Banks do not understand aviation. So um, we had to go to aviation financing and uh, private financing. Right. Which, right. which that was a really uh, huge hurdle to overcome. Yes, I'm sure like the liability side of your business, right, would yes. be a, a challenge and of course financial would be coming into, into play for that. Uh, interesting, and so yeah, so private investment was it was a good uh, good avenue for you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And Francois, in regards to any challenges with the strategic moves that you've made, or so the, I, I suppose the biggest challenge is uh, managing the uh, the exponential growth of our uh, company, uh, as well as uh, meeting the the high demand from our our clientele from around the world. Uh, so that's been a big challenge. Um, introducing the lean manufacturing techniques helped in that uh, instance. And, uh, right, streamlining kind of the, your production process. And exactly. So that you can yeah, keep costs down there. Excellent. Terry, um, if I can add just, just oh, a point. Do. Uh, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Feel free to jump in any time. A couple of challenges, and um, I think you know Steve uh, alluded to one of them, was power. Uh, it is a significant issue for us. Um, where we are, we're at the end of the Morrisburg line. Uh, we have very unstable um, energy coming into our plant. Um, it affects us significantly. Every time there's a little power click, it's $35,000, uh, $50,000 because we have to get the molten plastic out or start the lines again. We have wire breaks, copper breaks, so it's significant cost to our business. Uh, we have been working uh, very closely with, uh, you know, Cardinal and with uh, Prescott and, and both federal and, and provincial uh, legislation to try to see how we can put pressure on, on hydro. Um, it impacts obviously bringing new business into town as well because the power just isn't there, a stable power source. Um, the other thing is, um, um, I would say, you know, if we're looking for, um, you know, professionals um, in the organization, if you're looking for professionals, it is a challenge. Um, most of them are either working or they're relocated somewhere else. So I think, you know, we need to be really cognizant of the fact that a lot of talent has moved to Ottawa or moved somewhere else. So we usually have to recruit some of these engineers. Um, we have to recruit some of the logistics expertise that we need in outside of the area um, or, you know, look into Kingston. It's, it's a significant um, disadvantage right. because there's significant cost. Um, so I think that's, um, that's something that um, needs to be um, looked at. Um, and um, I think those are really two of the key areas. Right, yeah, and you're right, and uh, certainly that's economic development, you know, management and officers are certainly there to support those, right, because those are always those challenges, you know, the infrastructure requirements and your, your labor force and getting those experts. And I find what's interesting too now is that, you know, in, in the market of labor force, uh, the quality of life in our smaller rural communities is becoming much more appetizing uh, for uh, professionals. Uh, so there certainly are a lot of programs and resources through our employment resource centers and you know all of our CFDCs, et cetera, that can support those efforts to try to get those you know professional recruitment. So um, always a challenge, um, but hopefully there's some connections that can be made to the programs and services for you that you need. So thank you for sharing that. It's very important. Um, what, what resources have you used to overcome your challenges? And, and resources could be a number of things. As we've, I think we've talked of some of it. Um, you know, it could be funding, financial, maybe looking for some funders that can support you, uh, expertise in certain fields that you're looking for, um, mentors, you know, coaching, mentors, that kind of thing, and even partnerships and collaborations, which certainly I find in my field in economic development is so very important. So, um, Dave, I'm just wondering if there's been anything with you um, that you've found or challenged with or you, that you can share about those key resources that you've uh, helped you overcome your challenges? Um, the resources, like, like Transport Canada has just been phenomenal with us. I mean, they're there to help us and uh, their support's been outstanding. Um, also from the uh, other helicopter operators, uh, i.e. Uh, Niagara Helicopter Tours. I mean, I had numerous conversations with uh, Rudy at Niagara Helicopters. You know, 
in the beginning to start up, you know, he gave me so many good pointers and he was kind of my mentor. I mean, he's been into it for over 25 years. So right. that was a huge, huge help in starting this business. Yeah, and mentorship is, is a really key piece, isn't it? It is. Um, and I know you kind of, you have a legacy of being an entrepreneur, right? I think your father, like you kind of learned from your father being yes. in entrepreneurship for quite a yeah, long time. In the insurance business. Yeah, so certainly uh, learning from others and, uh, and having that mentor and, and that support even through the industry, right? Thinking of your, uh, not as competitors, but as complementing you, right? And trying exactly. to work together, you know, that there's enough for everyone and that uh, yeah. what's good for one is good for another. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. And Francois, I wondered um, if uh, you can speak on some of the resources, Francois Gay, uh, that you've used to overcome your challenges. <laughs> uh, the, the company uh, took advantage of the EODP and EODF programs uh, right. initially. Uh, so that was very, very helpful. Um, one of the things that we also focused on is establishing and getting connected to our politicians and to the communities and the services that are available to us. Um, so we've reached out to them, we've invited them to different meetings, we've invited them to be part of the solution. Uh, we want them to be aware of the challenges that we're facing. Um, we want their help um, and, uh, you, know, um, you know, we're looking to continue to grow um, in North America significantly, probably from 20 to 50 percent over the next three years because North America is our market. Um, so, you know, um, obviously all, as much help as we can get and the more that we can do, the chances are that we'll potentially continue to expand here. Um, so I think that's something we need to, uh, you know, we're, we're always in touch with, we're always trying to influence with um, our senior management. Excellent. Excellent. And that's very exciting, right? Anytime we're looking at these types of expansions. And it's true, our, our, our politicians have been incredibly supportive of our communities in Leeds and Granville, and uh, we're, we're very lucky in regards to the, you know, the relationships that are being built and have been built over the years. And uh, there's a lot of support there, so thank you for sharing that. And Francois, um, so just to, to talk about that, about any resources that you've used to overcome your challenges. Um, you know, again, could be funding, uh, you know, expertise, mentors, uh, others, you know, sharing. I know that you started out too with your father, is that not right? And, you, you know, when he was building these chairs many, many years ago, and that's an incredible legacy. Yep, absolutely. The, uh, well, uh, we're actually going to be uh, celebrating our 60th anniversary uh, next year. That's My amazing. My father started in 1955. Um, uh, so, uh, with our challenges, uh, we uh, reached out to uh, make connections uh, with the uh, right people, and we've gotten some help with the uh, Granville Development uh, Fund, um, and uh, we've made a lot of uh, changes to our supplier uh, base. We've expanded our our supplier base to make sure that uh, we could manage the supply base for for, um, uh, for our supplies. Uh, to meet up with the higher demand. Right, and that's uh, always a key piece, isn't it, right, to diversify your supplier base. Absolutely. So if something happens and you don't have that channel, then mm -hmm. that's a huge challenge for you. Yep. Right? Excellent. And uh, just actually the final question, so I think we'll have some time for some questions from the audience. Um, what moves are you considering from here? And again, it could be, I hope it's not a physical move, I'm not talking about that, no. Uh, but certainly in regards to strategic moves or ideas for the future, your planning, it just would be interesting for us. You've, you kind of touched on some of that. Um, and, and Francois, Gay, if you wanted to touch on that before we close. Well, I think one of the things I mentioned is that the company is looking to grow in North America. So it's definitely on our radar in regards to thinking about, you know, what are the, what are the, um, the possibilities here? Um, in Leeds Granville, um, you know, and, and you know, we need to look at certain things. Uh, our energy costs are high. Um, there's no doubt about it. That is something that impacts us uh, as a business because we consume a lot. So we're trying to do everything we can there, and there are some things that limit us. Um, so energy is something we're looking at. Uh, we're trying to tap into anything that's out there that can reduce our costs. Um, the other thing that um, you know is is a concern that we keep looking at is labor costs. So we need to keep our labor costs under control. That's just a reality of uh, running a, a large business that's global. Um, but um, these are all achievable. Right. Um, so I think that's that's the good thing. Um, what we really need to do is continue to be very active in the community to grow um, our brands and and the people that want to work with us and really invest in the people. So training our workers, making sure they want to stay with us, that they get the right skills so we're building uh, you know, great cable 
that uh, the cable isn't going to have faults in it, that we're not creating scrap. Um, these are the things that, you know, if we can reduce the cost, make the plant even more successful. It's easy to go to Milan, it's easy to go to Lexington, South Carolina and go, we're doing great. Uh, we don't have any problems. Let's continue to grow the business. If the numbers look good, corporations usually invest. So um, I think that's, uh, that's our continued challenge is to continue to get better. Right, and, and it's good to know these things, right? Especially with our politicians here, of course, mm -hmm. and, and all of us to, to all support you in those efforts to try to meet those demands. Correct. And uh, I know there's uh, some great programs coming out of the Canada-Ontario Job Grant which has just been announced as well and, and you know another great program where you know there's two-thirds funding for uh, for training for uh, for existing employees so lots of great things that will be shared uh, I'm sure uh, so thank you very much uh, and Dave um, just any moves that you're considering from here what your plans are in the, in the future um, I guess with thanks to our uh, marketing representative um, we've signed on a couple of contracts with tour bus operators and um, so I'll be expanding my fleet this year in 2015, plus our staff will increase staff. Um, again, uh, the expansion of a, a flight training facility, uh, maintenance organization for Eastern Ontario, because there, there really is nothing in Eastern Ontario for uh, helicopter maintenance. So we'll be expanding our, our buildings in the future. Um, and we kind of want to put Thousand Islands in the area as the next Niagara Falls. And, uh, being year-round, we want to support our community, um, create employment for uh, the hotels, et cetera. So that's what we're, our goal is. Yeah, and I think that it's very interesting you talk about that diversification of your business, right? And looking into that, like the flight training and the maintenance, et cetera. I mean, that's key, isn't it? Like the yeah, diversification. It's just not a seasonal business. We're year-round. and. Right, and, and you both talked about actually partnerships, right, which is so important. Yeah. Uh, being involved in the community, being a community partner, um, because it, it just gets you engaged in the local community, and it's sometimes a bit harder when you're a larger corporation, right? Um, but it sounds like you guys have really gotten a great understanding of that, and, and, and you as well, Dave, in regards to, to, to the work you're doing. And of course, uh, Francois, we'll finish off with you in regards to the moves you're considering, but you know, a community partnership is certainly, uh, I, I totally know that you totally understand that and, and find a lot of value in that, obviously, in, in a lot of the work that you do here in the community, so. Oh. Absolutely. Um, uh, for our plans, we're planning on uh, expanding our our, uh, our current, uh, uh, almost doubling our uh, our footprint um, for our plant, uh, adding new machinery, um, and uh, we're looking at uh, hiring more uh, uh, specialized employees uh, from the community. Excellent. And uh, so, and we're looking at expanding our. Uh, dealer network in Europe and, uh, and uh, also expanding our our product line uh, with the introduction of new products. Uh, this year our new uh, four position reclining at on next year. So it's actually uh, wow, four, nice. position, four position reclining and folding at one. So I'm not chair. comfortable enough in my chair <laughs> <No>. at home. <laughs> I have to get more comfortable. Perfect. Yeah, no, I mean, amazing talking to you all and learning more about your businesses and how really successful you all are. Uh, all at different stages of your business, all completely different types of businesses with your own challenges, but so much hope for the future. And um, I just wish you great success. So thank you gentlemen so much for sharing your experiences and certainly in making the right moves because you're sure making a lot of the right moves. Terry, what can I say? Oprah doesn't hold a candle. <laughs> Oprah at the cottage. Thank you. It was a pleasure, thank you.